Hello guitar heads, it's your DIY friend again, back with another video. So here are luthier tools for DIY guitar kits. When it comes to building kit guitars, having the right tools along with the knowledge of how to use them correctly are important. Whether it's for your safety or for the success of the project, having the right tool is the most convenient way to get started in this hobby. So here are essential luthier tools for DIY guitar kits. In this video, we're going to take a look at some essential luthier tools required for building DIY guitar kits, along with a couple of specialized tools. The workbench. Perhaps it's a stretch to call a workbench a tool, but your first consideration should always be your workspace. A workbench with a soft-faced vice jaws is ideal. But if you don't have this option, look for a large, well-lit, and well-ventilated area that you can safely work on your guitar without increasing the chances of scratches and dents occurring. Also remember to use the right type of mask. A standard N95 particulate mask is effective in preventing dust but largely useless in protecting you from paint fumes. Choose a P100 rated ventilator with activated carbon. Clamps. If you are assembling a kit with a bolt-on neck, you don't need to use a clamp. But if you are assembling a set neck guitar, you're going to need at least one clamp. Well, ideally it's two to maintain pressure on the neck joint as the glue dries. It's also important to use padding or wood blocks to protect the guitar and prevent compression dents while being clamped. Screwdriver or power drill. While you can use screwdriver and it's actually preferable when installing smaller screws, using a power drill will allow you to work much faster and allow you to drill pilot holes for the screws of smaller components such as tuners, strap knobs, and string guides without the risk of cracking the wood. Cordless power drills are easier to use because there are no wires dangling. Just remember to adjust the torque of your power drill to avoid over tightening the screws lightweight hammer so we don't need thor's hammer for this okay we need a small hammer or ideally a builder's mallet is required if you're working on a guitar that features a two pneumatic bridge as the bridge and tailpiece pins need to be hammered into place so you don't need to be as strong as thor you need to be gentle you should not hit the pins directly if using a standard hammer as this will damage its texture or chrome finish Always use a cushion like a wood block to cushion the impact and avoid scratching the hardware. Soldering iron. If you're doing wiring yourself, you are going to need a soldering iron. This is the case for even some of the easier kits to assemble. Example, the SD style guitar kit which features a pre-wired pickguard as the ground wire will need to be connected to the bridge. Soldering is best done once you understand the basics. You can watch our video on common mistakes to avoid when building an electric guitar kit and learn how to solder. Here's a bonus. A soldering iron can be useful for repairing dents. A combination of heat and a damp rag can reduce the impact of a dent if held over the dent until the timber swells. Coping saw or jigsaw. If you plan on shaping your guitar's headstock, a coping saw or electric jigsaw is required. Coping saws feature thin, flexible blades, similar to a jigsaw, which allows more precise cuts and curves to be made when shaping your headstock. Always remember to mark the outline using a lead pencil and be sure to cut well outside the lines to compensate for the thickness of the blade while leaving sufficient room for sanding. Steel ruler. You're also going to require a way to measure the scale length of the guitar, along with measurements required for aligning smaller components. Ideally, a set square can also help improve efficiency and accuracy. But if you don't have one, a reliable steel ruler and a good eye can still be effective. Rags Rags are a large part of any DIY kit project, and you're going to need rags, lots of them. For applying stain, for protecting the guitar from scratches, and cleaning up. If you're using rags to protect the guitar from scratches, make sure the rag is clean not soaked in anything that will damage the paint like thinners and other materials that could scratch the guitar. Hardwood sanding block. The last tool I'd consider essential is a hardwood sanding block. Why hardwood? Flexible sanding blocks 
conform to bumps or non-uniform sections when sanding, preventing a flat finish and making it much more difficult to achieve a professional finish. We've made an entire video about sanding, here's the link. Fret dressing tools. While the tools listed above are essential, if you plan on performing fret work, leveling and shaping frets, the tools below are also required. So here are the tools that you need. Fretting hammer. This is used for seating frets. Leveling beam. Used to ensure consistent fret height on your guitar snag. Fret shaping files. Used to dress or shape your frets. Fret rocker. Checks the level of adjacent frets. Now along with the tools listed above, it's also useful to have the following consumables. You need a masking tape, a thick pen marker, fine grade wet and dry sandpaper, fine grade steel wool, and an eraser. So keep in mind if attempting fretwork yourself, research the steps and practice on a spare neck or a less valuable guitar. So in short, be sure to know what you're doing before you actually do it. Fretwork is not for beginners. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. Till next time, rock on!